Hello and welcome to the Fix-It Shed. So today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, I have Jared here who has a gardening channel on YouTube and we're going to be working on something together. So we're going to be making a cold frame. So you want to tell us about a cold frame? So essentially a cold frame is a climate regulating device. It helps to buffer cool weather crops from extreme winter conditions. I plan to use these cold frames in the garden to grow kale and other greens during the winter time so that we can have a local source of food. So we're going to be making the cold frames based loosely on the directions provided in the, the Four Season Harvest by Elliot Coleman. In here he suggests how to make them and using either old windows or Lexan as the top of the cold frame. And the I looked up the Lexan and it's about $110 per two foot by four foot section. So we're not doing that. We're going to see what else we can come up with to do this a little less expensively. So I was just looking on Facebook Marketplace and I found somebody that had listed sliding glass doors for free. And I thought that they might work out as a lid for the cold frame. They might be a little bit heavy, but we're going to give them a try and see how they work. All right, I got the doors all loaded up. They are heavy. <laughs> so let's hope for a safe trip home. Okay, made it home safe and sound from picking up the... Uh, the sliding glass doors now gotta get them unloaded and figure out where I'm gonna put them. So here's one of the sliding glass doors and they are very heavy. Um, this is uh, 36 inches by 36 inches across by 79 inches tall. So now we need to make a cold frame that'll fit this door. So let's get started. So I've been rummaging around in my piles of nonsense. So I think I've come up with a, enough lumber to build the cold frame. Since I'm going to be piecing it together a little bit, um, it's going to end up being a little bit beefier, but it's also because of the weight of the sliding glass door, making it a little bit beefier is probably a good idea anyway. Okay, so I've got some 2x3s and 2x4s to frame it out. I think I'm going to use mostly 2x3s. Um, I'm going to use some 2x3s in the corners. And this is uh, 1 by 11. Um, would have been nice if it was 12, but we'll work with the 11 and um, we'll make it work. So it's got some spots that are rotten, but that part's going to get cut out anyway for the most part. But I wanted to have a nice solid piece for the sides to give it stability because of the weight of the sliding glass door. I think the first thing we're going to do is cut this board and make the sides, and then we're going to build the rest of it from there. After making a few cuts, I determined that I think that this is pressure treated, so we don't want to be using this in the garden in the uh, cold frame box. So we ran out to the hardware store and picked up some 8 foot 1x12s. I don't generally cut freehand. I use a lot of guides in order to make uh, nice straight cuts. We are using the chop saw to cut a slight angle on the top of the corner post so that it matches the sides. Okay, so we've made the side panels. That's where they're going to, how they're going to attach to the uh, sliding glass door that we have for the lid. And now for the side beams, for the actually the front and back beams, we're going to notch out. We're going to notch out like right here for the boards. And I've also got a notch out for this groove that is sticking out of the sliding glass door so that it lays flat. Okay, we got the posts notched out so that we're ready to put the front end side rails in. So the doors are actually 78 and a half inches tall. Uh, so I'm cutting these boards to 77 inches because the 77 inches plus the 
inch and a half width of combined width of the sides would give me 78 and a half. Okay, now I'm setting it up, getting the rails in place, and trying to get it as square as I can. I like to pre-drill all the uh, places where I'm going to put screws in, that way I have less to worry about as far as the uh, wood splitting when I put the screw in. On the front, I was able to put one piece of crate wood that would that covered the gap between the two by threes, and but on the back, this this gap is a little bit too wide, so I can put two boards on here to span the gap. But then I'm going to have a seam here that's going to leak air, so I'm going to put another piece of scrap over the seam and we're going to do it from the inside so you don't really see it. So these screws did come through the wood, I'm just using the multi-disc to cut off the tips and sand it down and make it nice and smooth. So this is the bottom surface of the cold frame and it's going to be sitting on the ground. So we don't want this to rot out, so we're going to put some scrap wood. So this is some more crate wood that I have. We're going to put this around the bottom to keep the good part of the cold frame from rotting. So we're also going to be using galvanized screws so that they don't uh, rust away very quickly. So we made a slightly odd uh, executive decision um, due to, I, I built this frame to have the door in this orientation, um, but we've decided to put the hinges on this side just because the side is very thin over there and this will give us more room because I got to put hinges on and they have to be screwed in. So we, we wanted a little bit of extra room, so we're going to do, we're going to hinge it on this side. Um, it's an experiment, so we'll see how it goes. 
I'm using an old screw and a hammer just to uh, dent the metal a little bit so that the drill bit doesn't wander. I added some washers behind the hinges as well. Uh, just so that the threads wouldn't bottom out on the aluminum of the door. As I raised the door, it felt like there was an awful lot of weight on the hinges, which really only have two screws each holding it into the 2x3s. So I decided I was going to add a couple more hinges. Okay, and I did make a little prop for it so that it will stay open. I built a little space for it to, so that it locks in. And there's plenty of weight on it from the sliding glass door that it's not going anywhere. Here you can see where I've added the extra hinges, and so now I have a total of four. I feel a lot better with that. So that's going to conclude the build portion of the cold frame. In my next video, I'm going to be installing it in the garden. If you'd like to see that video, I'm going to put a link to it up here. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Take care.